Tina suffered a terrible loss when her son passed away a year and a half ago. Aww. But she and her husband decided that they wanted to turn their tragedy into something positive. So when they met a homeless woman named Phyllis, they helped her with food, clothes, and a place to live. <laughs> and then they discovered her shocking past. Take a look. A year and a half ago, our son died in an automobile accident. And this past Christmas, we decided that instead of, obviously, we can't buy him gifts, we will adopt a family or somebody that's in need. And then one day as we're driving to a restaurant, my husband said, do you have anybody in mind? And I said, no, not yet. And we had passed a road that, that wasn't taking us to our restaurant, and he turned around and backed up, and I said, I know what you're doing. And I said, you're going to where that homeless person was down the road. And he said, yes. And we stopped. And I said, my name's Tina. And I said, we're going into town. If I, if I can get you anything, I'd like to. And she said, I don't really need anything. And I said, OK. And I gave her $80 at that time, I believe. And that's how it all started, that I met this homeless lady. Being homeless was horrible. I mean, I've got aches and pains that I never knew I had. <laughs> I think a 50-year-old. I'm starting out where 16-year-olds start. I'm having to start my life all over again, and I have to bust my butt for minimum wage. And then from there, we got to know her little by little. After meeting her, it just crossed my mind, why is she homeless? And it bothered me, and she made mention that she had been married in our county. I used to work for a criminal attorney, so I know how to do internet searches. And I did an internet search on Phyllis when I was home, and her name popped up as a sexual offender. I was charged in 1997 with three counts of child pornography. I was devastated. I had no idea of child pornography. My heart sunk. I wished I'd never gotten into it. And the first thing my husband said to me is, don't judge, you don't know the truth. When I looked at her registry, it said she was a sexual offender, and it was for two photographs. Um, I want to say sexual performance by a child, I called her and I said, you're a sexual offender. And she said, I thought you knew. And from there, she explained to me pretty much in depth everything that took place. She described the pictures to me that caused her to be arrested and I was actually floored because I have pictures of my children very much the same or worse in nature. He shows it to me and it's the two boys without their pants on and they're hugging at a distance. And he said, now, if you could tell me that the mama took the pictures of it. And I was like, I didn't take these pictures. The child took these pictures. It's obvious. I mean, they're not focused. There's, there's, I mean, if a, a grown up had taken them, they would have been at a higher level. They were down low. Um, it, they were old pictures. The film was eight to 10 years old. Three days later, I think, I was arrested. They came to my job and took me out in front of everybody. It was devastating. I mean, I went from having holding my head up, being proud that I was a single mother working a job, to um, three counts of child pornography. I told my public defender that I'm innocent. I want to go to trial. Two years later, I finally go to trial, and then I'm convicted. Uh, Phyllis, what happened that led to your status as a lifetime sex offender? In 1997, I uh, worked for um, a drugstore and I uh, put three rolls of film in for developing. Um, had given me a box of stuff that said this is yours and the film was in there. I took it in for developing and was going away for four days and um, I came back to work. Then they show up and arrest me and I went through trial and was convicted. You were convicted of child pornography? No, they dropped it down to possession of a sexual performance. What uh, sentence were you given? Uh, 24 months probation. So you go through the process, you're helping her out. How did you find out that she was a registered sex offender? When I first met her, we got her an apartment. It's a monthly or weekly ordeal. And I'd listened to her talk. I'd taken a lot of everything she said. And she said she was married in the county I was in. And so I knew that I could do an internet search to see if she was truly married. Um, maybe to see if there was a criminal history or something. And that's when I did the internet search and found that she was a sex offender. 
and she gave me a description of the pictures. And, you know, I could think of in the background, I've got pictures that I probably wouldn't want people to see nowadays because I'm scared. Well, I'm sure I have pictures of my kids that they'd be mortified if I showed anybody. You know, they're running around the house naked and, oh, I have one you know. of, of my son that was in the refrigerator. He had no bottoms on and he was reaching on his tiptoes. And that one was more, to me, um, And when I explicit. think of pictures like that, I don't think of pornography. No, no. But they I said it's like genitalia, you know. so it's pornography. Um, do you believe? With all my heart. You do. And how long have you known each other now? Since December 3rd, because we got the apartment on the 4th. Okay. How important is it for you to clear your name? It's more important that... that my child knows that this isn't his fault. And it breaks my heart that every day he has to live with. Even though I've told him over and over, it's not your fault, you were three and a half years old, he still harbors, you know, guilt for it. And, um... Sorry. I want it to go away for him. Right. And I want to be able to, I haven't, I haven't seen my grandchildren. Because of the sunset? Well, they live in, in the county that I was convicted of. I live in oh, another so county. Oh, so you have to stay away. <sighs> Phyllis, we asked you, did you take any of those pictures of your sons and another child that led to your arrest? You answered no. Did you know the naked photos were on the film when you developed it that led to your arrest? You answered no. Were you present when those photos of your sons and another child were taken? You answered no. The results came back all the same, and they came back that Phyllis told the truth. <laughs> You know, I always find this a tricky thing, Dan. You know, uh, all his fathers, mothers, when our kids are small, you're taking pictures. But here's the situation where this woman's living a normal life and that just gets destroyed. Here comes this big net of sex offender and they just, whoom, just swoop everybody into it. So it is unfair. We were discussing the different states and the different, you know, levels of sex offenders. Like in New York, you have level one, two, three, and you don't have to register unless you're a certain level. In Florida, that's not the case. In Florida, anything just throws you on that registry. Right. So as a probationed sex offender, there's a program that's utilized in 50 states and many countries throughout the world called post-conviction sex offender testing. In polygraph, we call it PSAT. And what happens is a sex offender comes out and they're assigned a parole or probation officer. They're assigned a therapist to try to help them not reoffend, and a polygraph examiner. So that forms what we call the containment model, right? Examiner, probation officer, and the therapist. And we're all there to help the sex offender not reoffend and to maintain public safety. She took a polygraph test, and her first polygraph test, if you deny that the offense took place, and many offenders do, it's called an instant offense test. And we test you, did you do it? And I gotta tell you, Steve, most offenders fail. She passed her instant offense test, I saw the report. I then conducted now, several years later, the same instant offense test and was able to once again conclude by the use of the polygraph that she was wrongfully convicted. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a good life. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, it's, it's a great story. It's about a person who, unfortunately, not because of your own um, situation or circumstances, but a woman came along and picked you up and helped you out. Yes. And I think, you know, when you go back home to wherever it is, uh, it, might be not, it might be difficult to change any of those type of laws. I don't think and it so. might be a process. But at least you can hold up your head up high and say, you know what, I didn't do anything wrong. Um, and I hope things will move on better for you so you can have a relationship with your sons. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.